so that you may accomplish it. Then the Picts went into this land to the north, and in the south the British had it. The Picts asked for wives from the Scots, and this was granted on the condition that their royal ancestry always be traced from the woman's side. They have long since held to this. After some years it happened that some of the Scots went from Ibernia to Britain and overcame part of the land. Their war leader was named Reada, and because of him they are called Dale Readai. Sixty years before Christ was born, Gaius Julius, the Roman Caesar, sought out Britain with eighty ships. There he was at first troubled with grim fighting and led astray a great part of his army. Then he left his troops with the Scots and went into Gaul. There he gathered six hundred ships and with them went again to Britain. It was in the first onslaught that the Caesar's steward was killed. He was named Labienus. Then the Welsh took great sharp stakes and drove them into a ford under the water. That river is called the Thames. When the Romans found that, they would not cross over the ford. Then the Welsh fled to the wooded wastes. The Caesar overcame a good many fortified villages with much fighting, then went again into Gaul. Although the chroniclers began their account with the birth of Christ, of Britain during the Roman occupation and the next two centuries received scant attention. There were few sources available and the chroniclers relied mainly on Bede's ecclesiastical history of Britain between the Roman occupation and 731, a book which is still an important historical source. Only when they reached the late 8th century, when the events they were describing had happened little more than 100 years earlier did the chroniclers begin to write in more detail. From, from 43 AD, the chroniclers, perhaps following Bede, dated somewhat later, when the Emperor Claudius began to invade to the first years of the 5th century, Britain was a peripheral colony of the great Roman Empire. Settlers came, built their villas, baths and libraries, enriched them with mosaics and sculptures, farmed the land, engaged in trade, and finally, in the early 5th century, withdrew to the further side of the channel. Magnificent though the remains of Roman rule are in Britain, their splendour is far outshone by those of France, Roman Gaul, and the mother country itself. As in other colonies, control was ensured by a substantial military presence and facilitated by a complex network of Roman roads built ruler straight across country. In the north, Hadrian's Wall defined the limits of Roman rule, and in the west, conquest went no further than Exeter. Settlement largely took place south of the Wash, and most of the thousands of villas constructed were further south still. So yeah, this picture is a roundel from the magnificent mosaic pavement found at Hinton St. Mary in Dorset. And here we have the Roman road across Wealdale Mall, North Yorkshire. miles of road were built in Britain, part of a much larger network with its hub at the imperial capital. And here we have a magnificent hoard of 34 silver bowls, platters, goblets and spoons was found at Mildon Hall, Suffolk. a Roman general, whose family hid it in about 360 after he had been arrested. This is the great dish. In the centre is the bearded mask of the sea god Neptune. The inner frieze shows near its 
of Anglo 
has been